This video will cover the steps to configure the radius feature on the AP4700 access points. This video is not intended to address the radius protocol terminology and implementation on the network level. Proper radius configuration requires that the user have adequate understanding and experience of both the radius server and of general networking knowledge. Please contact your network administrator before attempting any configuration changes on your network. And so, to get started with the RADIUS profiles, the first thing you have to do is create a profile. To get there, click on Configure, RADIUS, PXU Profile, and then the RADIUS Profile. Don't worry about the PXU Profile, it has nothing to do with RADIUS. Okay. So in this screen, what we're looking at is four options. Now these four options could be manipulated to whatever exactly you want them to be. It's just the profile name, just as long as the profile name matches within the actual SSID security tab, and we're going to cover that later. Okay. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and cover these, and uh, you're going to see it's fairly, fairly simple. Now let's go ahead and take a look inside these particular profiles. Now once again, you can name them whatever you want. So um, one of the more important ones is the MAC authentication one uh, because this actually has more options than uh, the other uh, configurations. And we're going to go ahead and cover the server parameters. But the more important one is because it's MAC authentication, uh, it has to match uh, the way that the radius server itself is set up especially the shared secrets so um, the way that we designed it is we given the option to configure the configuration and the radius server either using the shared secret or its MAC address as the password so you could use it you know dash uh, colon no dash or uh, nothing nothing there with the soul, uh, with the shared secret, or you could do the exact same thing with the MAC address. Now, once again, because there is no configuration on the wireless client itself, uh, the wireless client is going to connect to the radius server. Uh, all the information is going to get passed via a radius request packet, and that request packet is going to be the username, which is going to be the MAC address of the radio, but it's going to be how you tell it to be over here, and then that's going to have to match on the radius server itself. Okay, after you have that configured, all of these are just going to be your uh, accounting uh, info, uh, how long it's going to take to uh, interval. You have also your accounting uh, inactivity timer, and then your authorization lifetime in seconds. This is how long uh, the frame is actually going to live. Then you're going to go down to your server parameters. Now, uh, you could either do it by name or IP address. Go ahead and put in the IP address of your server. Do your destination port. Leave it as 1812. You could change it, whatever you want to. Uh, VLANs, that's going to be different if you actually have VLANs enabled after they're enabled within your uh, SSID security profile. Your VLANs are going to be available. Now here's going to be your shared secret. Now your shared secret is going to be strictly between you and the radius server, meaning that the AP and the radius server, um, that particular moment. So that's how you can enter it. And then you're going to have your response time, your maximum retransmissions, and then you could enable or disable it, this particular profile. And then of course you have a backup. If you have a backup, go ahead and enter the same information. Go ahead and click OK. All right, next one down the line is going to be EAP authentication. This is the one you're going to use for pretty much all your EAPs, like your PEEP, TLS, and so on. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Click Edit. Now, we're not looking at this anymore, okay? Uh, you could go ahead and change the server profile name. Once again, all it is is a name, just as long as this name matches the name in the SSID VLAN, which we're going to cover. But this right here uh, does not matter. Okay, but everything is pretty much stays the same. Uh, enter the IP address of your radius server, your port if you're using VLANs. Uh, once it's enabled, you'll be able to put your VLAN number on there. Put your shared secret that's going to be between you and your radius server. You got your response time, your maximum retransmission, then of course your server status enable and disable. And of course, you could go ahead and do your backup. You don't have to after you're done, just go ahead and click OK. 
All right. Now, accounting is if you're being going to be using accounting. It's the exact same exact same scenario. I mean, if you're going to be using accounting, there's no, nothing different here. This, once again, does not apply. You could change the name to whatever you want. Now, the last one down the list is management acts, and this one is a bit um, of an oddity. Um, this is really designed for security in managing the access point during login, meaning that if you click on management and services, if this option is enabled, okay, so you could use your uh, SSL, your HTTPS, and so on. If you scroll down at the bottom, it says HTTP radius access control. Okay, once this is enabled, and you can see right here, here is our profile name, okay? Well, what happens is that when this is enabled, every single time that you log into the radio, it's going to actually go and do a radio authentication, and then that's the only way you're going to be able to access the radio itself. If the radio authentication, the radio authentication fails, you're not going to be able to access the radio, but uh, for management, other than that, it's the exact same thing. Uh, this doesn't matter, uh, the IP address, the port number, shared secret, enable or disable. All right. But uh, this one, it's only if you want to have a secure management access to the radio management through a radio server authentication. All right, so now we have uh, told our access point where to go, meaning that it knows what the IP addresses are, it knows what the shared secret is of a radio server. The next is going to be to configure the security profiles between the access point and the wireless client. To do so, you need to create a security profile. Go ahead and click on Configure SSID VLAN Security and Security Profile. Now, you could have quite a bit of these, about 16 of them, with VLANs enabled, which also means that you could have quite a bit of radio servers. Um, but uh, in this particular instance, we're only going to have one, no VLANs enabled. So to configure, radio button, click edit. Now by default, the non-secure station is enabled. You have to uncheck it if you're going to check anything else. If not, it's going to error out on you. Now the radius options are either 802.1x station, WPA, or 802.11i, or AES, or WPA2, still the same thing. Uh, the more secure, which is going to be the 802.11i, that's the one you want to use. And this is strictly between the access point and the wireless client. But it's also telling the wireless client it's going to be using radius. Now, it doesn't care if it's PEEP, TLS, TTLS, or so forth on. Uh, it does not care. It's just going to know that when it communicates to a SSID, it's going to be connecting to a radius server. That's all on the back end side. Of course, you need a... Um, a client that supports radius authentication um, on the wireless client side. After you've done so, just go ahead and click OK. And it's going to tell you what you have. Now, on the next step, we're going to go ahead and show how to configure, how to add the security package to an actual SSID. Now that we're done with our security profile, we could go ahead and actually apply them to the actual SSIDs so uh, each client knows what to connect to, especially have VLANs and so on. But uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, manipulate wireless B. Now this is an AP4000. I have wireless A and B because there's two radios, an AP700. We'll just have wireless A. Okay, so wireless B. So we're going to scroll down, okay, as you can see here, enabled per SSID. Once again, that's only when VLANs are enabled. We covered that in our uh, previous videos. Now, our counting status, uh, it's either enabled or disabled. So we're going to have accounting for radius to keep track of uh, everything that's happening, uh, login times, and so on. You have radius MAC authentication. You have enable, disable, and strict. Enable is the MAC address. Control list is stored on the radius server. They're blocked or allowed. Based on the MAC ACL setting, if a higher priority authentication protocol is also enabled, the higher priority setting will override the MAC ACL. Uh, they're referring to a uh, hierarchy that we're going to go ahead and cover. Okay, and you have disabled. Of course, disabled is disabled. And then you have strict. Now, strict is if the hierarchy authentication protocol is also enabled, 
uh, radius MAC ACL setting will be applied in addition to the higher priority authentication protocol. Okay. So uh, the protocol hierarchy is as follows. All right, so the hierarchy itself is something that is built into the radio, uh, and it goes from highest to lowest. It'll go from 802.1x authentication, which includes uh, .1x, WPA, WPA, PSK, 802.11i, and 11i PSK. From then on, it's uh, MAC ACL via radius and MAC ACL control through the AP itself. So basically, if you have both 8021X and MAC ACS control authentication enabled, the 8021X authentication will take precedence because it is higher in the protocol hierarchy. But when the MAC access control status is strict, this will cause both radius MAC access ACL settings and the 8021X settings to be applied. So it becomes a, a, a double layer of security. Okay, so as an example, we have the MAC ACL list contains the MAC addresses that set the block and the PSK is configured to allow access for clients with appropriate PSK passphrase. If the MAC ACL status is set to enabled, PSK will take precedence and the clients in the MAC ACL list with the correct PSK passphrase would be allowed only if the PSK setting is taken into consideration. But if the MAC ACL setting is set to strict, then the clients in the MAC ACL will be blocked even though they have the correct PSK passphrase. Clients will only be allowed if they have the correct passphrase and are not listed in the MAC ACL. In this way, both MAC ACL and PSK settings are taken into consideration. So let's go ahead and continue with the configuration. Uh, the MAC ACL status, this is uh, not applicable as this has to do with the uh, uh, built-in MAC ACL unlike, uh, unlike the radius MAC ACL, which is based on MAC, radius MAC authentication. You have the Rekeen interval. Uh, this specifies the time interval for the AP to send group keys to all its associated clients. It's basically for WPA, so WPA you know, works by sending uh, keys across, uh, and if the keys um, don't match after a certain amount of time, uh, the system is going to think like it's being attacked, so it's a security feature. Now, here's going to be the security profile. Now, this is what we created in over here, in the security profiles. Okay, so if you had two, three, four, five, six, whichever security profile you want to use, you would just go ahead and enter that here. Okay, that's how that goes. Uh, here's your radius MAC authentication. Now, if we're not using radius uh, MAC authentication, don't worry about it. Okay, if we're using uh, EAP authentication, uh, this doesn't matter. If we are using MAC authentication, then this doesn't matter. And here's your accounting. But once again, this basically has to match what's in your radius tab profile. So. Once again, if we click here on Mac, edit, see if we could change it here. So if we change this to Mac 123, we're going to click back on our SSID VLAN tab. When we go here, we change this to Mac 123. They have to match. Right? If they don't match, then they're, uh, they're not going to work. Right? Now, the second that this is enabled, uh, when VLANs are enabled, you're going to have this option. Okay, all of this is basically going to go down into the table. So you're not going to see really all this. All of this is going to the table because now you have the option for up to 16 different uh, uh, SSIDs with different security packages. So the second that VLANs is enabled and this option gets enabled and it is pressed, then you're going to have all of these options are going to be moved down here, and you should be able to add and edit as you see fit. To learn more about Proxim Wireless and our solutions, please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim.